A very common task when masking is to cut out a specific object. That could be a person, a pet, a product, or anything else that you need to cut out and get rid of the background. So here we have a picture, and again, it's at the 100% zoom level, so I'm going to do a zoom to fit so that we can see the entire image. And we're going to start by using the freehand masking tool. We'll find that in the mask flyout. It's the third tool down, and it allows us to draw a line freehand around the area we wish to cut out. Now you might think, well, it'd be really difficult to draw something exact around this, and you're correct. So we're not going to try and do it perfectly. One other suggestion I'm going to make, if you use a mouse, you will find this more difficult. You might want to look into getting a graphics tablet, specifically a Wacom brand tablet, as they make the task much easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag outside of the object but relatively close. I don't need to be perfect here because we can go back later and clean it up. When I get to the end of the shape I've let go of my mouse and you'll notice the lines following me. So what I will do is double click and that finishes the mask. Now again, it's not perfect so we have some cleanup to do. What I'm going to do is zoom back to 100% and let's go ahead and move to the top of the image. You'll see the area that we didn't get before. So what I'm going to do is switch from the freehand mask to the brush mask. You'll notice the shortcut key is B for that one. And you'll see that my cursor has changed into a small brush. The size is 7 pixels. You'll see it's a solid round shape. So we can control this on the property bar. Now if I were to just start by clicking and dragging, I would create a new mask. That removed the old one. So I'm going to control Z to undo and get my mask back. You'll see there's a button here that will let me add to the mask and a button here that will let me subtract from the mask. In this case, I want to subtract so that line gets closer to the object I'm cutting out. But if you look down here at the bottom, it says the control key can be used to subtract the shift to add. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger to make it easier to knock off more space and I actually want a hard edge so let's go ahead and bump that up a little bit. I'm going to hold down my control key and then I'm just going to paint and you'll notice the line moves inward. And you'll see it's not terribly difficult. It is not stopping automatically at the edge. I just have to paint carefully. Now if I go too far, I can switch to the shift key and add that area back. So for the next several minutes, what I'm going to be doing is going around the shape and cleaning up these edges. Now once you get it relatively close, you'll probably want to zoom in even farther. So we'll go to 200% make the brush significantly smaller, maybe two or three pixels, and again, I'm going to clean up those edges. And I'm probably going to go back and forth between shift and control until I get it just right. It's not difficult, it can be tedious to get it just right. Now in this particular image, there's some areas we need to worry about. So I'm going to use my navigator to come down here. You'll see there's a hole between the sword and his hip. So what I would have to do to add that hole is use my control key and cut out this area. I would also need to move down a little bit and across because there's an area between his legs that I need to add a hole there. So to do all this, it's going to take some time. On this particular image, I would suggest 15 to 30 minutes to get it really cleaned up right. And I realize that's time consuming, but there is no magic answer to this. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to another version of this same file where I have actually finished it. So let's go ahead and bring up that other file. Oops, I got the wrong one. Let's put that one back down. Go back to this one. There we go. So you can see the mask all the way around. There's a hole there between the sword and his hip and I've also cleaned up there between his pant legs. So once we have the mask just right, what we can do is select Object, Create, Copy Selection, and now it becomes an object that floats above the image. If I drag it outside, you'll notice there's a small rectangle under my cursor and it will drop it on a transparent background. So you'll see exactly what we've got there. We've got it cut out and just right. If you have a little bit of extra you need to clean up, one thing you can do is you can feather the object just like you can feather a mask. So choose Object, Feather, and specify a number. I would suggest a very small number, maybe one or two. So we'll do that in case there's any ragged edges on this. So it's not difficult to cut something out, but it can be time consuming to get the mask just right.